Today I'm going to be taking a look at what can you clean Createx paints with. We're going to be taking a look at the illustration colors versus the Wicket colors. I'm also going to do a test with the Wicket mixed with the 4050 UVLS Clear. So there's basically one simple concept you need to know in order to keep your artwork safe. When I was first getting started, I was watching a video and I saw a guy put water or mist water on his project just to see what it would look like once it was cleared. Well, I thought that was a great idea. Well, just getting started and not knowing the chemical makeup of the paints I was working with, I had my finished artwork and I thought, well, okay, I'll give that a try. I put some water on my project only to watch it just melt away and I didn't know whether to cry I didn't know whether what to do all I knew is all my hard work and hours of work were ruined so stick around hopefully you get something from this video if you do please consider subscribing hit that bell so you get future notifications check out all my Amazon affiliate links down below for the products I use in this video and all my other videos and with that let's get started all right so let's start by identifying the difference between illustration colors and wicked colors. Illustration paint is made for illustration artists where you're going to be working say on a canvas or a board and you're really probably not going to be getting you know too much of your hands, fingerprints, stuff like that on your surface. Now if you do and you do need to clean it, what you have to remember about all of the wicked lines is as long as you're using a solvent based cleaner, you should be safe to clean off your paint and it shouldn't affect the paint and I'll show you that in a second. But there's more to it than that, which you really have to understand about the paint. And I really recommend whether you're using Createx or whatever paint you're using, understand the paint that you're using and always do a test panel to the side so you're not you know, testing it out on your artwork itself. So with the illustration colors, it is an acrylic paint. But from what I could tell in the Createx MDS sheets is it doesn't have a resin to go along with the acrylic. Okay, whereas the Wicket does. And what happens there is, is the Wicket paints with the acrylic resin in it makes it more durable for outside or exterior uses. And you'll see what I mean by that in a minute, where the illustration colors doesn't have that acrylic resin. Yes, it is an acrylic paint, but without having that extra hardener in there, the paint allows you longer times to manipulate the paint. The illustration colors, you can actually use water as your reducer, whereas You'll see in a second why you wouldn't want to use water for your wicket as a reducer. So I still use my 4011 usually when I'm doing illustration colors because that's what I've always done. But it just got brought to my attention just recently that water is a great reducer for it. So I just happened to learn that little tip when I was down in school of realism. So I would have never considered using water as my reducer. But I, after four days of using it, I'm convinced water is just fine. But you'll see why in a minute, why it wouldn't work on the Wicket. As you saw, I have this sectioned off in one, two, three, four different sections because I want to show you four, maybe possibly five different cleaners that you can use or shouldn't use. And I didn't want to mix the chemicals. So let's start off with the simplest one, water. And this is exactly what happened to me. I went and I misted my project to see what it would look like if it was going to be cleared. And everything was looking good looks great then i went to wipe off my project and i didn't read my msd sheet to say that you should only use a solvent based cleaner so that was my fault but i get a lot of comments from viewers and stuff and i know a lot of people out there just like when i was learning how to airbrush you're more concentrating on learning how to airbrush and you know learning the techniques you're not really maybe taking the time to learn about your paint and you learn the hard way. So hopefully this video is gonna help prevent you from learning the hard way like I did. With the 4050 and the Wicket without the 4050, this is the difference between the Wicket and the illustration. That is the biggest difference. Again, if you're doing a motorcycle tank, you know, I've done many motorcycle tanks where you know, you're doing fine line tape on it. And I know they all say they don't leave residue, but I've always, you know, a lot of times you get the tape marks because your tape was on a little too long or whatever. You need to get that residue off. A little soapy water on the wicket and you're fine. You can get that off. You could also use a solvent base as well as I'll show you in a minute. But as you can see, the water is not affecting the wicket colors. 
That's why also I recommend you use the 4011 reducer because if the water is not affecting the color itself, I wouldn't really recommend it as a reducer for this particular paint. And this is why you can use the water as a reducer with the illustration colors. All right, next, my go-to for a cleaner for many applications, this one as well is mineral spirits. This is not the odorless one. I know they recommend the odorless one, but either one works just the same. Put a little bit on a rag right there. We'll do our illustration color first. And remember, this is a solvent. Nothing coming off. That's a little bit of overspray for when I sprayed the panel, but no big deal. Again, looking good, right? So it's amazing how it works. You know, with solvent-based paints, you can use water-based cleaners not solvent. So just the opposite with water-based paints, you can use solvent-based cleaners. Now, there is an exception, and this is where I say you have to really know your paint. So next is acetone. Let's see if the acetone works. You would think it would, right? Because it is a solvent-based cleaner, just like the mineral spirits. So let's apply a little and see if it works. So, why didn't that work? So let me take you over to the computer. We'll take a look and I'll show you why. So just do a search for Createx Technical Data Sheets, createx.com, Technical Data Sheets. This will give you everything that you want for everything that Createx makes. And this is why acetone does not work as a suitable cleaner because the 4020 reducer contains acetone. So again, if it's in the reducer or it's a chemical that reduces your paint, it is not suitable for a cleaner. So while I had this up, I wanted to show you the other reducers, 4013, which I do have on my shelf, and what it contains. It gives it to you right here. It contains isopropyl alcohol. So obviously, rubbing alcohol would not be a suitable cleaner. 4011 contains propylene glycol monomethyl ether acetate. God knows I don't know what any of that means. I just know you can probably key in on the ether acetate. I just wanted you guys to be aware that Createx has all of these technical data sheets for you to go and check out and really get to know your paint. So again, make sure you do a test panel because if this is something that is one of your go-to cleaners, because acetone is a lot of go-to cleaners for a lot of people, you would think that this would be a compatible you know, to the mineral spirits itself. Now, I'm not an expert on acetone at all. But I would have thought that would have been a suitable cleaner because it cleans projects, residue, thins fiberglass, resin, epoxy, and adhesive, right? Dry. So to me, if it's doing epoxy and adhesives, you would think it's a solvent-based cleaner. All right, next up, good old paint thinner. Thins and cleans. It says the same thing as the acetone. That's why you got to be careful, right? Solvent-based. No problem. Good old paint thinner. All right, so before I show you this last one, I do want to point out for you illustrators out there, and I do a lot of illustration work myself. This is where it's really important, talking about water traps. I have some videos on that. And tankless compressors, how they get hot and produce moisture. You know, many a times back in the day when, you know, I was just getting started, I wasn't paying attention to the water trap, you know, whether it be right at my compressor or the one right at the brush, I'd be spraying along, I'm using illustration colors and spits water on my project. Really hard to fix. 
So be really careful and watch them water traps. Now, one more test. I got an automotive prep here, multi-purpose foaming prep cleaner used during all stages of the painting process. It tells you it's a fast drying formula, but it does say waterborne. I'm going to spray it. Now, all my solvents that are on here, I stepped away for a few minutes just to let you know these are all really dry. They all should be evaporated off of here, so I'm not mixing solvents or cleaners. And I'm just going to spray the panel. Get myself a clean towel here. And as you can see, it does not work on the illustration colors because it is a waterborne cleaner. All right, there you have it. Hopefully your takeaway from this video is know your paint, know your reducers. Know what you can use on it and what you can't. Doing simple tests like this on a little test board on the side will save you a lot of time and heartache. When it comes to the Createx line of paints, Basically, stick to your solvent-based cleaners and you should be fine, but please always do a test on the side to make sure you're comfortable before you go hitting your artwork. My go-to usually is mineral spirits. I have used water with the Wicket, you know, a little uh, water. If I got a fingerprint on something, I'll get a little bit of dishwashing soap, a couple drops of some water because dishwashing soap will break up grease, like greasy fingerprints. That works really well. So again, Whatever paint you're using, make sure you know it. Make sure you're comfortable with it before you go ruining your artwork. Hopefully you got something from this video. If you did, again, please consider subscribing. Hit that bell. A couple comments, good or bad. It really helps out with the YouTube algorithm. You guys know the drill. I appreciate it. Check out those links below. And with that, we'll see you in the next video.